Yeah. Bill, how do you, I mean, when, when, I mean, it seems like you're pretty dedicated to, you know, the art of making music, but it, as far as commercial concerns and, and Austin at large, like, do you have, like, some sense of, like, localism and fighting for Austin or... You know, like, is, is, are you mostly just, like, diving into your art and mostly dealing with that as an I'm, artist? I'm definitely about community, but I think that uh, you have to be critical as well. I, I, I'm not just going to go to bat for Austin just because it's Austin. If they're doing good shit, then for sure. But, yeah, keeping it local, it's, it's about one of the best things you can do to work against those global forces or whatever. <laughs> well, like, the studio that he set up in the film, Baby Blue, that's become in my mind, like a real mecca, like it, people like go there to get inspired and to work and there's film showings there and it's like, it's like what, what he introduces it. We didn't put it in the film, but he's, you said something about it, like chaos being put in a series of organized boxes. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I have this, these two sides of my personality, but yeah, I, I have to draw boundaries. I have, I'll, I have to, I create chaos or whatever, but then I create the boundaries in which chaos exists so it feels you know. like a community in that way yeah you know like a park in the middle of the city that's allowed to go wild with the uh, raccoons and <laughs> jungle <laughs> nice um jocelyn as far as when when you're working with the city i mean is there is that when permitting happens and that sort of thing is there any like do you guys basically just have to kind of go through a governmental process or is there some thought of artistic merits and that sort of thing being important to, to consider in, in terms of how the scene is working and that sort of thing? Yeah, unfortunately, the police code doesn't really care too much about artistic <laughs> presence. Uh, so, you know, I think that my job generally is to push against the, you know, more conservative constantly sort of make it neat and clean and make it uh, something that everybody can accept and so make it quieter, make it cleaner. And what we like to talk about it, and you know, we, we sit on boards together and do things together, is it what's vibrancy? And, and what do we mean by that when we want a vibrant cultural nightlife? And to me, the way I define it is something on the edge of chaos. It gets right up to that point of almost losing its shit. And then you, you you know, you bring it back down. So, you know, I deal every day with people who call music terrorism every day. Uh, and there's tons of them here in San Francisco, but we do what we can. And I think it's not gonna come from government to, to make sure there's vibrancy. I think it's gonna come from outside of government and it needs to come from folks who go out to places like Cafe du Nord and, and play in the street without a permit and find underground venues. and. God knows I'm on camera telling people to go do illegal things, but I'm, I'm not. But um, <laughs> keep, a, <laughs> keep that vibrant sort of underground you know, here as much as we can. We don't have, unfortunately, anywhere to go out. At least you guys have more property to keep going out. Uh, we're stuck. We got water. You know, we're 49 yeah, square miles. Yeah, but if it miles. gets too far out, it's, uh, it kills the vibrancy, too. <laughs> right, right. Well, so, so we're on top of each other, so it even gets more difficult to do that. But as much as we can, as government, or at least a small part of our government, uh, support, again, that sort of vibrant, almost chaotic in a box stuff, we can keep new uh, artists and, and new interesting things here in San Francisco. Otherwise, we're Walnut Creek, and even they have bar fights, as I just found out. <laughs> 